Hello and welcome back to Wayne's Strange Brain. This is probably just going to be uh, 10 minutes of me rambling um, and talking about a project that I've been working on for a little over two years now. Um, and the reason I'm telling you is not because right now or a minute ago, I solved something very important or you know reached a milestone. Those are always happening. But the reason I'm telling you is actually because someone else uh, went ahead and did this. And the thing I'm referring to is being able to look inside a pack of Pokemon cards or other trading cards without actually opening the pack. And basically, I got this job where I had to measure things. I measure things for a living. And one of the tools that we use to measure and inspect objects is X-ray CT. And just like CAT scanning for a human body, it uses two-dimensional X-rays. It takes many X-ray images and then creates this three-dimensional reconstruction of the inside of an object. And being myself, I remembered this box of Pokemon cards that my dad had that I wasn't allowed to open ever since I was a kid. And that's a nice, you know, happy story about how it began. Um, but I really kind of got obsessed about this. And it got to the point where uh, when I had the opportunity to buy a CT scanner, like my own, I I took it. Uh, yeah, that's a whole other story. I mean, not even really another story. It's kind of central to this. Uh, but there was an opportunity to buy a CT scanner on eBay. Uh, it was local pickup only. It was uh, an hour away from my house. And I went with a coworker um, and we saw it. It was like in a guy's garage, uh, if you can believe it. And there were two of them. Oh, there's two of them. And I'm like, these are actually reasonably sized. I could, I could get one of these. And yeah, I bought two CT scanners, not that day, but it ate at me and uh, at one point, I think a coworker, actually maybe my uh, my maybe my team leader, uh, maybe he said, uh, "Well, if you want to do that, I was talking about experimenting with something, you know, just you know, why don't you get your own machine?" And I was like, "You know what? I have a chance to do this," and so I bought it. Um, and I did say this is ten minutes, and we're at two minutes and thirty seconds, so I think we have some time. Uh, the reveal is going to be at the end. Don't worry about the Pokemon cards. That's what this video is about. Uh, but you know, there was a process to get there. So I got this machine and I spent three months fixing it. And I want to talk slowly because of how long this took. I mean, if this is a recording, then, you know, look at this. I, you know, made a, a grid to unwarp the detector. Um, I'm still just talking to myself, but, you know, look at the, look at the video. Uh, I made, um, you know, we made, you know, things to center uh, the x-ray source, had to replace the x-ray source, took it off the shielding, cut myself. Um, you know, carted the dang thing from, from, you know, on a truck, I'm going all out of order, but you know, clearly my focus is on the Pokemon cards, Pokemon cards preview. So yeah, um, the machine, that was something you had to do. Um, and I got it working. And actually the first things I did was I worked for, um, the Vesuvius challenge. There's these ancient Herculaneum scrolls. If you're unfamiliar, uh, they were these ancient scrolls. Um, let's just get past the ancient scrolls real quick. They were these ancient scrolls that were uh, potentially, I think, actually owned by Julius Caesar's father-in-law, uh, which is neat. And there was a volcanic eruption, and they uh, they were these scrolls were basically preserved um, like lumps of charcoal. Uh, they were actually burned, some of them, um, before they were realized that there was writing. And they did all sorts of things to look inside the the scrolls. They you know unwrapped them, and maybe you can. Um, you know, guess where this is going, but it's very, not, it's very destructive. Uh, you know, an Italian monk was able to look inside, um, by actually what he did was he like laboriously with several people invented a contraption to unroll it over the course of like years, which, you know, in modern times, it's like you watching this video all the way to the end. Um, and, uh, so there's always been the idea to open them without breaking them. And there was a challenge last year to open them with x-ray ct they scanned them on a synchrotron a very powerful x-ray source and ultimately they uh were able to look inside one of these scrolls and one of the ways i try to contribute um with like you know all the guys who actually mainly solved the problems um is i tried to make 
fake scrolls uh, is I made like a few replicas of these scrolls. Um, you know, got some papyrus, got some ink, drew on them with the with the papyrus and the ink, and um, put them in the oven. They got carbonized, and then yeah, so got a prize. Woohoo! But people were gathering and comparing notes. It was fun. It was supportive. Wayne is here, who bought a CT machine on eBay and s scanned a burrito. Is that true? Yeah. So a very small burrito. Um, and so it, this was a culture that was forming, and the average IQ of this team, of this group of people, was very, very high. Um, and the outliers were even higher. And so it was quite a lot of fun. Over time, it's grown to about 4,000 members. And then after this was done and they read the first big scroll, um, I was like, okay, let's, let's look at the Pokemon cards. <laughs> and I tried all sorts of stuff. Um, I actually, there's a lot of stuff that I've done that is not covered by what these guys did very well, by the way, I might add. Um, they did an awesome job at this. Go ahead and you can read that. Um, I'm basically just whining about the fact that they released this publicly before I did. Uh, and they did a better job. Where was I? There was, uh, we got the, I worked on the Pokemon cards. Okay. So I did all sorts of stuff. Uh, one of the things I did was I looked at uh, 2D images, actually. I was like, hey, maybe you can just like take a picture of a card. Uh, and it turns out there's actually like not a tiny amount of contrast. There's a very small amount of contrast in x-rays. But there's, I mean, obviously this technique wouldn't work if there wasn't some contrast. Um, and so it turns out that if you do a two-dimensional image uh, and you just go boop, then you can get some contrast. And the problem turns out um, when you try and look inside a real pack, you know, with several cards, uh, with like 10 or 11 cards. And I went actually on this whole process. I worked uh, with some very intelligent people on this problem um, who, you know, really like leaders in this field. And it's pretty difficult uh, to denoise, um, you know, after adding like 10 or 11 uh, cards. Um, but we tried and we got like these kind of blurry shapes where yeah this is actually like already useful information you're like okay you know that there's a foil card here but you know you're going to be arguing over what it is and you know i haven't given up on this totally i still have some ideas uh but one day i you know just kind of went ahead and i was like let's brute force this using some principles that i've learned for scanning other things like for industry not to get into specifics but you know flat things are a specific problem actually in um in CT scanning, the, they have a long path length, uh, and the, it constantly changes. You know, there's scatter, there's attenuation problems, uh, but there's some principles you can take in mind. And then the big leap uh, that I think actually enabled it was trying to uh, virtually flatten it, which again was something that you I learned from um, this you know Vesuvius challenge uh, was if there's a very small amount of contrast, if you have a hope to see it, you know, and is you have to make it flat. Just can't make the damn thing flat. Stupid orange, stop being round, stop being flat. And uh, I used a few different kinds of techniques um, to virtually flatten it. And when I first saw enough information, like I saw that evolution symbol and I saw enough information, I was like, what am I looking at? And all of a sudden I was like, I knew what I was seeing. And here you go, here's the reveal. Uh, I've got these two packs. I was actually in Utah and I saw these packs for uh, $250 each. Uh, they were in a little game shop and they said they were brought in by an old lady with a shoebox. And if you know anything about packs, you know that they, they can be weighed, uh, these old ones. Uh, and you can tell whether there's a foil inside and um, there's probably not a foil inside because the world should be skeptical. But it turned out that um, they were telling the truth and there was a foil inside and there was a foil inside both. And so here you go, uh, first edition jungle, we've got a pincer. And first edition fossil, we've got a Gengar. And I don't know what I want to do with these. I don't want to open them. Um, the pincer is kind of something that you, if you found, you'd be like, hooray, it's a foil. But, you know, if you, especially if you bought it weighed, I'm not sure you'd want uh, to, to open it. I don't know. Because um, the thing is, I have no idea what this does to the value because if you think about it, an action figure is worth more when it's still in the box and these are still in the pack. So you can probably determine some of the aspects of value. You can determine centering, you can determine condition. And so if this was a PSA 10, when you opened it, 
Well, what would it be when it's still in the pack? It's an 11? I don't know. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit more than 10 minutes. Um, I don't want to just end it just for the, the lulls of being exactly 10 minutes. Um, but that's really most of the story. Um, I worked pretty hard at this. Um, you know, part of it is the, yeah, there's ego. There's totally ego, you know, ego, narcissism, whatever you call it. Um, you know, humans work hard at things and we expect to be rewarded. Maybe that's not fair. Maybe that is, um, especially with creative works. It's hard to tell. But I consider this a creative work. I consider this applied physics. Um, I didn't just, I wasn't able to just be like, hey, uh, I bought this with a million dollars because that's kind of how much these cost in general for a good one, um, that kind of scale. Uh, you know, I got I got these machines for 1500 bucks. And I feel like was able to prove something pretty, pretty significant because this market is huge. Um, if you think about in terms of just like, yeah, in terms of marketability, um, I mean, this is very chaotic. Uh, this is, you can speculate about this for hours, really. And, and we have, you know, me and friends and um, potential business partners. And I'm sure, I'm sure these guys, it's a big deal um, if you take this seriously. And I hopefully, if, well, if you're watching still at this point, you are taking this seriously. But uh, what will the markets do? Will they tank? Uh, I haven't really been thinking about images, but I guess it would be like a, Maybe there's like a tour tank who's, you know, tank of the market. So anything else? Uh, that was a pretty, uh, that was a pretty passionate ramble. Um, again, one take. And what do I want to close on? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I can't edit this. Uh, if I edited this, that would break the illusion. But yeah, um, sorry if this, you know, ruined your day. If you like Pokemon and I do like I watched Pokemon 2000 like a hundred times when I was a kid and it was all the parties and this is why we're still interested in is the nostalgia I, I really hope that this is just kind of like a new future where you know I've got this Gengar and I don't want to open him because you know he's cool I I know what's in there I don't need to open it uh it's a Gengar it's a ghost Pokemon he's in hiding I, he has that right right like why not so I guess that's what I want to close on. Um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, or found it interesting. Um, give a like and subscribe. That's ostensibly why people make YouTube videos. Uh, I'm not the best at it, you know, in content, but whatever content is. Goodbye.